Joining us now is former Republican strategist Steve Schmidt, who, I must tell you, has been absolutely incandescent in his criticism of the president. Uh, Steve, thank you for making time to be here tonight. I feel like I really need to hear you on this. I have been wanting to hear where you are at on all of this stuff. So thanks for making time to be here. Good evening. Good to be with you, Rachel. The um, um, well, General John Allen. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I think it's an astonishing scene of political cowardice today at the at the Senate lunch, each one of them coming by. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. The former Secretary of Defense and a legendary retired Marine Corps four-star general said that the President of the United States is a threat to the American Constitution. And what prompted him to speak out? Well, what happened is that there was a group of Americans in front of the North Lawn of the White House on the street, peacefully protesting, exercising their rights under the First Amendment to the Constitution of the United States to peacefully assembly, to petition their government, and to speak. And what was loosed against them was state sanctioned violence. Those peaceful protesters were assaulted by law enforcement. So Donald Trump could walk across the street and commit an act of sacrilege, holding a Bible upside down to look strong in front of the Church of Presidents because he felt humiliated from his cowardice and allowing himself to be evacuated from the Oval Office to the bunker, the Presidential Emergency Operations Center. So this is a low moment and a dangerous hour in this country. And per your previous segment, Rachel, we don't have secret police in the United States of America. These protests are about racial justice and about the fact that too many of us are not equally treated under the law. But now an essential part of this story is understanding who are these men. We don't have secret police. These men need badges. They need identification. The American people have a right to know who's funding them, their chain of command, and who they report to. This idea that the Attorney General of the United States has suddenly become an interior minister in a thugocracy with a private militia of some type that reports to him is antithetical to every precept of American democracy. And that's before we get to the threats of the president threatening the American people with the deployment of the most lethal combat force in world history to the streets of the nation that they swear to protect. Military in this country serves the nation, not a man. Steve, on the issue of the use of active duty U.S. troops um, against Americans in American streets, we've seen a couple of interesting dynamics. We have seen, you know, General Mattis, uh, General John Allen, Admiral Mike Mullen, apparently General Dempsey, former chairman of the Joint Chiefs, is going to speak out tomorrow in an interview on NPR's Morning Edition in the morning. Um, we've seen all of these senior retired military officials, including some who served very recently in the highest levels of the Trump administration, speak speak out and say the president shouldn't be doing this. At the same time, we've got the current defense secretary, Mark Esper, apparently completely flummoxed by the functioning of his own mouth, having no idea that he was participating in these political acts with the president, that he was putting the defense department's imprimatur on what the president was doing with what you just described in terms of that walk to St. John's Church. And it, uh, there's been a reversal and then a reversal and then another reversal in terms of whether or not these troops from Fort Bragg are actually deploying into the streets of D.C. I feel very concerned by the distance between this sort of principled stance being taken by former military leaders and this chaos and dithering and confusion that we're seeing from the people who are actually in control right now who ought to be telling the president no when he asks them to do these things. You should be concerned, and we shouldn't underestimate the importance of all of these former four-star officers speaking out. These four-star officers, by custom and tradition, are loath to speak out on political matters. They don't want to get involved, and they consider it part of their duty, even in retirement, to maintain the apolitical nature of the U.S. military. And there's very significant peer pressure, for example, when a retired lieutenant general like Michael Flynn goes out and is as political as he was. He's rebuked 
by a lot of those colleagues. Now, they're speaking out because they feel honor bound to protect the integrity and the honor of the United States military for Donald Trump. The Secretary of Defense has badly bumbled and stumbled his way through this, and he compromised through his complicit appearance with the president, saying, hey, I didn't know where I was going. Bottom line is, this is a man who's in charge of the most powerful military in the world, and we shouldn't hold him to a standard that we wouldn't allow for a 19-year-old infantry private if he lost his rifle or said to his sergeant, I didn't know where I was going. It's just unacceptable. So the Secretary of Defense has compromised the integrity of the U.S. military, whether it's an act of omission, a sin of omission or a sin of commission. It doesn't matter. He needs to be prepared to resign to maintain the independence of the United States military from the political machinations of the White House. There is no earthly reason why the world's deadliest combat troops should be deployed to American streets. That's why these retired officers are speaking out. This is an illiberal exercise by the president of the United States, who has had this jonesing since the moment he came into office to show that he's a tough guy and a strong man. But these are the tactics of Putin and Erdogan. Again, the military serves the nation. It doesn't serve Trump. This is the province of law enforcement and of the National Guard. Active duty combat units of the active forces of the United States have no business being put into a domestic law enforcement situation. It's not their purpose, and it will undermine the strength of the military and the American citizen's moral connection to the most admired institution in the country. Former senior Republican strategist Steve Schmidt. Uh, Steve, my friend, thank you. It's been too long um, since you've been here on this program and since I've seen you. Thanks for making time to be here tonight.